This used to be the old airport that people would come to. And of course lots has changed since then. So back then we used to have a club here called Concord somewhere on the left here. It was a club that was open till in the early hours of the morning. Bengaluru was very different then. This is where I had my first ever meal when I arrived in Bengaluru in 1996. And I'm told that power station is where the first light bulb uh, was lit, if I'm not mistaken, in India. Chennai, there. There's certain satisfaction that's also derived from watching people enjoy their meals, be it idlis or uh, just some coffee. Good morning folks, we've set out on a city ride, a short city ride today. It's a holiday morning and therefore the streets are uh, quite empty, relatively speaking, even at 8.15 in the morning. But before we get on the ride, first order of business is to get some gas. So I hope you caught the last couple of motor vlogs involving the BMW 1250GS. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did riding that machine and today it's back to my old love, my first love, the fat boy. As opposed to the BMW which is very high on tech, the fat boy is all mechanical as you can see. All the switches and knobs which is also comforting, reassuring in a manner of speaking because you know that if something does go wrong, it probably can be fixed a little easier. But I guess it's a different uh, cup of tea altogether. You can't really compare the two machines. Happy though to be sitting back on the fat boy. There's something about uh, a motorcycle that you've ridden for a while it feels like you're you've come back home normal full tank 40 I did 336 kilometers on the last tank full and I filled about 15 liters so do the math so roughly about 20 odd kilometers to a liter is what is the mileage that I secured on this last tank of gas. So a lot of times people find it very surprising that a beast like this, this is about 1700 odd cc, delivers that kind of mileage. That's because it's a very frugal engine and also the engine doesn't rev too high. So you could be cruising at 100 but your uh, RPM meter will be somewhere around 3000, that's it. You know, for a while I've been thinking about the old airport. I don't know how many of you were there in Bengaluru to remember the old airport, the HAL airport. For some reason I was thinking of that and so I said, okay, let's ride towards the old airport, which is the airport that I first landed when I came to Bengaluru in uh, 1996. And I said, let's retrace our path from there. There's some cloud cover today, which makes for great riding weather. So the air is cool. This intermediate ring road wasn't there back in the day. So if you had to go to Jayanagar, you went all the way through town, double road, to get to Jayanagar or to Khosur road to get to Koromangla. I think this was defense land earlier, if I'm not mistaken. And this road was carved through defense land. And therefore you have uh, defense lands on both sides 
if i am not mistaken i think back in the day when this road was just built they would do shooting practice on these defense properties and there have been uh, cases i think only perhaps one where uh, a civilian riding on this road was hit by a stray bullet <laughs> what are the odds of that happening well but it did happen my horn still doesn't work and to be honest i'm not missing it as much missing it at all in fact i because i don't use the horn as much i forget to uh, you know clip the wire back on and it's a very simple process not even a 30 second job so it was interesting to see some of the comments that uh, one of my earlier vlogs received on the honking issue If you haven't seen that yet, do look up the vlog where I rode to Chikpalapur. I think it's called the No Breakfast on this 150 kilometer breakfast ride. And many of you had some very interesting comments to make. The so Leela Palace Hotel. Back in the day it enjoyed the advantage of being the closest hotel to the old airport. Of course things have changed quite a bit from then. But I don't think it's altered its fortune significantly because it still do very well. We are now on the old airport road and uh, approaching the old airport but I can see plenty of uh, cop cars all around jeeps all around this used to be camp fort still is camp fort but is a mall but it used to look more like a fort then do you remember back in the day many cops on this stretch today so i think there probably is some vip movement that is uh, expected and i was hoping to turn into the road where the old airport is i'm not sure if i can I'm, i'll be able to do that the road going in there where you see all trucks now that's where the old airport was i think i'm going to try and see if i can get in there many cops all around i don't know if i'm even allowed to be in there i don't think so so this is the old airport road i think there's some vip movement happening there today probably So there were two roads that went in. So this, of course, is barricaded now. And uh, you went down that road. I think it's one of those two roads. I'm not sure which one that led to the airport. Sali hogli ke bhar tarah. Ali hog wada. Back in the day, it was a busy road. But now I think it's all these trucks that have taken over. Oh, you know this is not a road that's in use, as one can see. This used to be the old airport that people would come to, and of course, lots has changed since then. ಒಂದು ನೆನಪು ಬಂತು ನಾನು ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತೈದು ವರ್ಷ ಮುಂಚೆ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಹೇಗೆ ಎಲ್ಲಿ ಬಂದೆ ಲೆಟ್ ಮೀ ಟೇಕ್ ಒನ್ ರೌಂಡ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ಸುಮಾರು ಪೊಲೀಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ನೋಡಿದೆ ಐ ತಿಂಕ್ ವಿ ಐ ಪಿ ಮೂವ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಏನ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇರಬಹುದು ಇವತ್ತು ಅಮಿತ್ ಶಾ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇದಾರೆ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಇದೆಲ್ಲ ಪ್ರೈವೇಟ್ ಜೆಟ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಇಲ್ಲಿಯೇ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಆಗುದಲ್ಲ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಓಕೆ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ನೈಸ್ ಮೀಟಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಸಿ ಯು
well that's our uh, quick round of the old airport which is now a VIP airport in fact uh, a few years ago uh, I also took a private jet from this airport to go to Hampi and I was invited by a winery and they flew a couple of us in a private jet there to take a look at the winery Krisma wines they make their wines near Hampi so back then we used to have a club here called Concord somewhere on the left here it was a club that was open till in the early hours of the morning Bengaluru was very different then and uh, I have a few memories so I think let's ride towards town and uh, we'll chat a bit about some of those memories as Bengaluru grew and the number of flights coming into the city grew I think eventually it came to be very crowded there are certain times when you would go to the airport and all that you would see was a sea of people cramped into that uh, space there the tight space but somehow things worked somehow it, you know people still made it work but yes the new airport is like a huge huge you can't even compare it it's like night and day or an entirely different universe altogether but because the old airport was so close when the new airport came up and they realized they had to travel 40 kilometers as opposed to this which was quite literally quite virtually in their backyard there was a huge uh, issue that was made out of it and uh, for a long time people tried to retain the old airport the HL airport for the domestic flights but of course that wasn't to be and uh, I think today people don't even remember <laughs> all that anymore Dr. Rajkumar circle Pandavaru it's amazing the kind of legacy that he has left behind for the people of Karnataka and the world so this was the route that I first took when I landed uh, in Bengaluru in uh, March of 1996 I'm retracing the route the path and uh, we traveled along this road to a place that connects with food so ride along with me and I'll share with you those memories trees are bare there's no color on the trees as you can see all the flowers most of them have fallen barring this flame of the forest that seems to be stubbornly holding on I think the flame of the forest is also probably a perennial flowering tree I'm not sure those of you into plants please comment below no drone zone because we are uh, riding through defense land I think the trees were also planted in a manner I think I read somewhere that in Bengaluru through the year you would always have some trees that would be flowering we are approaching uh, Trinity Circle which is also where uh, MG Road begins the number of cops that you see on the road whenever you have a VIP visit to the city is uh, quite amazing <laughs> 
We are on MG Road now. Heading to that very special memory that I want to share with you. That is the East Parade Church on the right hand side. And uh, right opposite East Parade, in fact this is another piece of history, is uh, a power station. That power station that you have there on Dickinson Road. And I'm told that power station is where the first light bulb uh, was lit, if I'm not mistaken, in India. And uh, this is the intersection of uh, Brigade Road and Kaban Road. I think what we'll do is uh, Kaban Road on the right and Brigade Road on the left. The Kaveri State Handicrafts Corporation on the left. You'd bring visitors who wanted to take away some memorabilia, some uh, brick brac of Karnataka history and heritage. We're first coming up to my memory that I want to share with you. The first meal that I had when I officially moved to Bengaluru. Can you guess? Oh, MG Road, which is where we are. You'll know in the next few seconds. If you can guess, type in, punch in your comment right now. Well, this is where I had my first ever meal when I arrived in Bengaluru in 1996 at a restaurant called The Ebony, located on the 13th floor of this building called Barton Center. I came in at the old airport and then I was driven here and uh, there was a meal, a very special meal that was organized for me up there. And I think that's the reason why I'll never forget Ebony for as long as I'm around. So I was sitting somewhere up there. I don't know if it faced this direction or the other side. But it's also a restaurant where you have a fabulous view of the city. So if you haven't been to uh, 13th floor Ebony, you should definitely do that. They do some great multi-cuisine food. It's a memory that I think will always remain in my mind. And uh, yes, so this is where I had my first meal back in the day. Of course, there was no metro then. But uh, I'm going to try and see if I can get a selfie here. There used to be lakeside as well. I think which is still around an iconic ice cream place, ice cream Angadi. Okay, the straight signal is open, so let's go straight. Maybe we'll do uh, Kaban Road another day. But uh, I want to get back to MG Road, Brigade Road, Residency Road. This is a church where I come to worship St. Mark's Cathedral. We are looping around uh, St. Mark's. It's 9.15 in the morning. Also when Koshi's just opens for service. Koshi's to my left, Bowring Institute to my right. We are going to get back on MG Road and uh, turn into Brigade Road. There is so much history in this city that when you go around so i remember a few uh, many years ago i did a walk with uh, bengaluru walks so they would do these walks around the city and uh, they would walk you through the history the heritage and i learned so much about the city and uh, my appreciation for the city uh, grew tremendously so if they're still around you should uh, look them up Bang Bangalore walks it was, is what it was called. I don't know if it's called Bengaluru walks now. There was a cinema here called Plaza Cinema which is now the MG Road metro station. It's always nice every once in a while to pause amidst our frantic lives and uh, take a walk down memory lane I'm quite enjoying it so back in the day this is also where you came to shop this is where all the shops where there was no online shopping of course and if you had to shop for any brand any shirts all of them were here and uh, one of these shops I don't know which one was also 
where you had the first internet cafe in India came up here and that was by coffee day so back then we only had dial up connections and so if you don't know what dial up means so if you had to get internet you would basically dial in and it would make all those sounds like what happens when you would uh, send a fax or I don't know if many of you even know anything there was such something called a fax or facsimile that existed and uh, but out here I think the speeds were slightly faster right this was uh, in the day of AOL uh, and uh, Yahoo and all of that uh, so this is a road that really goes back and it's always been iconic it's always been uh, very popular Fantastic, great shoots happening all around. I think this makes for a lovely setting. There used to be a very famous uh, Indian restaurant here called Queen's. You should love the Indian food. Okay. We are now entering Museum Road. And uh, what you see on the left side, the museum is what was popularly known as uh, Museum Inn. It was a hotel back in the day, run by this restaurateur called Prakash Nichani, if I'm not mistaken. Samarkand on Infantry Road. I still remember the biryanis that they did there. Or uh, Sahib and Sultan, which is a train-themed restaurant that he opened uh, in Forum. Uh, he also had uh, Khansama restaurant in UB City and uh, a few others. He also had a very popular Chinese restaurant brand called Aromas of China. So all that made a beginning from that place called Museum Inn. And in Museum Inn, there was also a, a popular pub called Tavern. I don't, I think that's the name Tavern. And that's where we would go to listen to retro music. So, so if you look at the fine dining scene or you know, the freestanding quality dining scene in Bengaluru, I think had its beginnings in Museum Inn. But I think unfortunately they ran into organizational issues or management issues or financial issues and so uh, one by one I think they lost all their restaurants and then I think it all collapsed like a pack of cards when uh, he passed away quite unexpectedly, quite suddenly. We are on Residency Road and of course these are all the schools here, Bishop Cotton's Girls School. Sacred Heart, there's uh, Joseph's right here. All these are heritage institutions, Good Shepherd. So when I first came to Bengaluru, the one thing that was very obvious, the first question that would happen when you went into a party, any party was, which school are you from? Right, because there's, there were only those many schools in Bengaluru that people passed out of. And uh, so everybody had a connection to that and then you build up the conversation from there because you knew someone who knew someone etc etc so if you're from outside the city if you're not from Bengaluru you didn't have the advantage of that so you literally knew that you were not from the city back then but of course things have changed now there's so much more uh, there was another popular heritage building here I don't remember what it was called but it was there back in the day and uh, my memory of Residency Road goes back to this hotel. This is where I worked many, many years ago. Back then it was called the Gateway Hotel on Residency Road. Today it's called the Vivanta. There used to be a pub right next to the Gateway Hotel called Pub World. There was also Black Cadillac behind there, uh, near, uh, closer to Bangalore Club, and which was again a very popular place. They also had an alfresco area which was very popular, especially if you had family with you or if you had uh, ladies in your group. Um, so, you know, there were these places, these iconic places that one would go to, uh, to make an evening out. Very different Bengaluru scene, there were only those many places that you could go to, there were only those many uh, spots. But it was also a time when everybody knew everyone, which is what also made the city very special. Look at the beauty of this road, with, uh, with a tree canopy, residency road, come in early in the day and experience, explore Bengaluru, you'll love it. So if you're new to Bengaluru and if you've, uh, let's say, only moved here in the last 5-10 years, all that you've seen is the hustle, the bustle, the din, the clamor, I would recommend that you step out 
a little early in the day when the streets aren't crowded when there isn't too much noise around you no shore no sharaba to explore the city to explore its history to explore its heritage because there's so much more to bengaluru than what you see now bengaluru is not just about it bengaluru is so much more bengaluru is about history its people uh, the little nuggets of history that you will see here and there Bengaluru has many first to to its uh, credit and that you will only see if you are exploring the city in a manner like this of course every city changes every city evolves and has to evolve to the future but i hope that in that evolution we don't lose our essence we don't lose our soul entirely another memory that i want to share with you is right here uh what you see now as central mall well there was no central mall back in the day this building is called victoria embassy and there's a reason why it's called victoria so back in the day there was a ground here which occupied the space and there was a small uh, structure on it and that structure was an icon for old bengalurians who will still remember it it was called victoria hotel so after you spend time in pub world or black cadillac or wherever you were you would come to victoria hotel and have the salon paratha uh, i think they would do some chicken i don't know if it was a butter chicken or the moglai chicken and a few other dishes and uh, this is where you would park your cars in there and savor that meal very old school uh, sort of a hotel uh, so it was right opposite mayo hall uh which is where you had a hotel victoria well it's 9:45 now uh, we began this uh bengaluru darshan around 8:30 so i think there's already plenty of uh, footage i think this vlog must already be a bit long uh so perhaps it's time to close our uh, city ride right here probably save some more for the next time around Uh, do let me know what you thought of this vlog if you enjoyed it uh, you know the drill give it a thumbs up uh, share it with family and friends uh, you know those who may like it and if you haven't subscribed to the channel already please do subscribe it helps us in the work that we do it encourages me basically to you know do more things like this present them to you and also what you'd like to see in future vlogs so i think that's it for this one I hope you enjoyed it as much as I always do bringing it to you until the next time take care bye Thank you Tumbi. Thank you. Okay. Are you from around here? Uh, from Coimbatore. From Coimbatore. Yeah, so yeah. I'm just visiting for work actually. So Coimbatore is a place that I definitely want to visit because I've heard so much about the food there. Right. right. Uh a lot of vegetarian food as exactly, well, right? Yeah. We have to put South Indian joint. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Take yeah. care. Yeah, bye. bye. Always nice to meet people, food lovers wherever you go. I think food brings people together, right? In the most beautiful ways. Ah, it's a good coffee. Mysore coffee, lah. Ah, Mysore. Very good coffee. Definitely look up Bangalore coffee cart when you come here in Koramangala. The tadlis are flying out there. You tried? Yeah. Ah, nalla erka. Ah, nalla erka. 
So I think when you come here, you basically do that uh, tatte idli, which is what everybody seems to be enjoying. Chana ke dia. There's certain satisfaction that's also derived from watching people enjoy their meals, be it idlis or uh, just some coffee. Well, I think now we're going to really close this vlog right here. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, short morning outing. If you did, you know the drill. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.